Hey everybody, Mr. Scott coming at you on a wonderful Friday. So today in class, what we did is we went through our virtual binder and made sure we got it all filled out. That way we're ready to go because next week on Tuesday, when we come back, because we don't have school Monday, we're going to be taking a three question assessment over Punnett squares and what we've learned in investigation 7.1. So we're going to start by answering our focus question. How do traits pass from parents to offspring? And what we talked about in class is, well, parents transfer them in their genes. And they can be dominant or recessive. Keep in mind, if they're dominant, they are more powerful. They are stronger than the recessive gene. So we'll more likely see the dominant characteristics and traits on a human being, such as eye color, hair color, attached earlobes, um, you know, height, all of that stuff. So <clears throat> in the after section, we put parents transfer their genes, and they can be dominant or recessive. And then we scroll down. We looked at Mendel's experiment. So what did he question, what question did he have? Well, his question was that what happens if we mix a tall plant and a short plant? And what did people think would happen? Well, in his time, and just like most of us thought, if we mix a tall and a short, we would get a medium. But we found out that's not what actually happens. He actually got four offspring that were all tall. All four were tall. So we fill that in. What happens if we mix a tall and a short plant? That was his question. And people thought that if you mix a tall and a short plant, you would get a medium, but that's not what actually happened. They ended up getting all four plants were tall. So, and the way we can actually look at that, we can fill out some Punnett squares on his experiment. So our first one, we have our short plant up top and our tall plant. And remember, all it is is drag and drop. So drag it over the side and drop it down from the top. So if we drag it, we'll have a big L and a little L. We'll have big L, little L, big L, little L, big L, little L. If we're looking at that, we always are trying to figure out the percentage. And if we're looking at this, we have one, two, three, four boxes. And four out of the four have our dominant trait. And the dominant trait will always overpower our recessive. So if we're looking at this, 100% of the offspring would be tall. In his next phase, he mixed one, two of the offsprings together. So he had a big L, little L, and a big L, little L. So we put those big L, little L on the top, big L, little L on the side. And we found out if we drag and drop, we'll have a big L and a big L in this box, a big L, little L, big L, little L, and little L, little L in this one. Meaning if he mixed, he had two of them breed, their offspring would have a one, two, three. So three out of four, so 75% chance of being tall. We have one box with no capital letters. So there's one fourth chance that it will be short. So 25% chance it will be a short plant. Then if we flip back over in our virtual binder, we scroll down, we answered those questions already. We scroll down to here. And because this was ready to be printed off so you could write on it, it doesn't actually have a place where we can type on the side. So we double clicked and we inserted a column to the left. And in that column, we put a, lo a capital F and a capital F. And up top, we put a lowercase f and a lowercase f. And we're going to do the exact same thing, the drag and drop. So we'll have a, a uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, drag, drop, uppercase, lowercase, drag, drag, uppercase, drop, lowercase. And this is the same as kind of what we just did. If we're looking at this, it'll have a 100% chance that it will be a flower with a purple leaf. Or it'll have purple flowers, sorry. And I have this Google drawing. It's just a little bit clearer and easier to see, so I'm going to type these in. Same as what's on your binder, so uppercase and lowercase in each box. And looking at this, like I just said, Dominant F, dominant F, dominant F, dominant F. So 100% chance that it will have a purple flower. 
Then we asked, what would we have to do in order to produce a plant with a white flower? And to answer this question, well, we have to actually change one of the genes that was passed on or one of the genes in the parent plant. So we'd have to make this uppercase F a lowercase one. Otherwise, we would not end up with any white flowers. And we came over, we filled in this chart, same as before, drag and drop, uppercase, 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 lowercase, uppercase, uppercase, drag, drop, and uppercase, lowercase. So in this one, we would count up again, okay? One uppercase, one uppercase, one uppercase, one uppercase. So again, 100% chance that the flowers will be purple. And the last thing we looked at is we looked at some traits in actual humans, some dominant traits, such as, guys, this one's going to sting, but baldness in males. That dominant trait is present, which means the dominant trait for males is baldness. Body hair, the dominant trait is having an abundance. So having a lot of body hair is a dominant trait. Uh, dimples, dominant trait. Free earlobes, dominant trait. And one of the most interesting ones for me is to look at our wonderful, scroll down to number of fingers. Having six fingers is actually a dominant trait. So meaning that if somebody is born with six fingers, more than likely, depending on, you know, who they marry, who they have kids with, etc. More than likely, that student, that, that offspring, sorry, will have six fingers. And one that was interesting for me, if we look down, is astigmatism. For vision, that's a dominant trait, meaning, because I have an astigmatism, so meaning for me, my offspring, my children, will more than likely be born with an astigmatism. Uh, your homework assignment for today was to have a wonderful weekend. Stay smart, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you on Tuesday. No school Monday. And last little reminder, if you haven't already, go into your email, search up student survey, and there is a survey that everybody in the school is filling out, and we need, need, need you to make sure that you do yours as well. Um, this drawing will be up on Classroom. On Tuesday, we are going to take an assessment. It looks like this. Basically, some of the things that we just did today in class, just with some different numbers and different traits. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you all Tuesday. Bye!